All right, so here we are. If you go to Google Classroom, you should have a Google Sheets of this Hemholtz Coil Lab data from December 2020 available to you with your own copy. So what I'd like you to do right now, if you haven't already done so, would be to go to the classroom and open up this file. Now, we can do a couple different things here, right? You can do split screen, watch the video, manipulate your data, or you could just watch the video and then go back and do the, the data after. It's your call. I'm not there, I don't know what you're doing. All right, so push pause if you haven't already done so and go and grab this data. Good, now that you're back, let's take a look at what the objective is here after all. Well, with the Hemholtz coil, what we are trying to do was we are trying to find the charge to mass ratio of an electron. So we measured the number of coils in the Hemholtz coil, uh, the radius of the B field, the voltage, the current, and then these two R values, uh, the loop of light that was made wasn't exactly centered on the middle, so on zero. So we measured both the right and left side, and we're just going to take an average of these two numbers in a minute. What we're going to be able to do with that is to take all of those values and plug them into this formula to get the charge to mass ratio. But as you can see, I don't have what B and RC are yet. So now we get to use the power of spreadsheets to make our lives significantly easier. Okay? So, first thing I'm going to calculate, given all of this data that I have here, is the B field strength. So, I'm going to go ahead and right here, I know you guys have done tables before. I don't mean to treat you like you're idiots, but you're not. I know you're not. But we're going to say B field in Teslas. And now I'm going to write an equation. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and up here in the functions or the equation line, I'm going to hit equals. That tells Google Sheets that I'm going to write an equation. Then I'm going to look at the, the formula for Hemholtz coil. I went over this in class. I don't have it written down. Maybe this will happen in post-production. But for a Hemholtz coil, the B field is N times mu naught times the current, times the number eight, all divided by five times the square root of five times the radius of the B field. So if I were to write that out as an equation, it's going to be B equals this box right here. So I click on it, it says A4. Then I'm gonna multiply that, and for multiplication here, I'm gonna use the star, which is above the eight, so shift A, so I got A4 star. And then I'm gonna put in parentheses, mu naught. Now mu naught, four pi times 10 to the negative seven. So I'm gonna plug that in, and instead of dealing with the pi button on Google Sheets, which sometimes throws me for a loop, I'm just gonna use the value of 1.257. So 1.257. 257, roughly 4 pi, um, 12.57. And then I'm going to go E, or times 10 to the negative 6. 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 is roughly 12.57 times 10 to the minus 6. N mu naught, close parentheses, times current. Now the current changes in some of these values. So I don't want to just write in one number. I want to multiply it by that one. Okay. Divide it by, so I can just use the backslash, divide it by 5 times root 5. The 5 times the square root of 5 is about 11.18. So I'm just going to use that value, 11.18 times. Now, I notice I didn't put a parentheses there, so I'm going to go back, make sure I put parentheses there, times the radius of the magnetic field, which is going to be this value here, and then close parentheses. All right, let's see if this works. Now, that was a serious pain in the neck, wasn't it? God, I got an error. I wonder what it is. 
I think it's right here. What's it? Just work here. Now when I hit enter. Yes. Gave me a number. Now, so now I just continue to type that. Oh my God, I can't type that in again. I'll go nuts. But what I can do is take this and watch the magic of spreadsheets. If I take my cursor and I bring it down to that bottom corner, oh, did you see that? It turns into a dark cross. And I can take that and drag it down. And it will take that formula and change it and utilize the information in each of those columns. <sighs> Next. That clearly has way too many digits. We can't have that. Oh, it's weird being up here. We can't have that many digits in an answer. So I'm going to go over to numbers, uh, excuse me, format, and under format, I can type in number and go to scientific. There we go. All right, so I got through the B field. That was the hardest one. The other value I need to get is the average, average of the radius, which is going to be in meters. So I'm going to do this equals, and I'm going to go ahead and take parentheses, this box plus this box, close parentheses, and divide by two. That, so you find the average of something. Five by two. I'm going to take that and drag it all the way down. Oh, yeah. Nice. Now, next, I have voltage. I have B field. I have RC. I can get all the way to my final results, can't I? I can go ahead right now, and in the next column, I can do two times the voltage divided by B squared times R. Now, I was just labeling this column. I was not doing a formula. For my formula, I'm going to go down to this line, and I go equals. That tells Google that I'm going to write an equation. And I'm going to go parentheses, two times the voltage. Two times this square. Oops. I wasn't done yet. Go back. Boom. Two. Oh, I didn't use the star again. Two times this one. Close parentheses. Divided by B squared. So I'm going to take again. Open up some parentheses. This value squared, so raise it to the two. I'm going to close the parentheses there and then multiply times the radius, average radius squared. Now, I'm a fan of putting in extra parentheses when I am unsure about what to do. I'm going to put another parenthesis at the end and one at the beginning of this section. Yeah, you see it? Let's hope this works. The heavy sigh because just like every scientist doing an experiment, I have an idea of what my results should have been. And that is not it. So I'm going to really have to sit back and think for a moment about what could have gone wrong. Right now, I want you to wake up and figure out what went wrong. I will be group in a moment.
I know that you know what number it is that I missed ages ago. What, 10 minutes ago, maybe? I didn't multiply by 8 on the top. I think I even said the word 8. N mu naught times 8 times I. And I did not include that in my formula for the B field. So I'm going to go back and click on that box. And you know what? All is not lost. All I need to do is to multiply this by 8. And that's my new value for the B field. Is that right? I don't know. But what I do know is that I don't have to recalculate everything because now that I have found my error, I can take that, turn the cross, turn the, the pointer into a cross and drag it down. And it'll take that equation and replace what was there previously. And now I have my new value for the B field. That also, and that was the key, you guys saw it, didn't you? It also changed my value for the charge to mass ratio, which some of you are right now screaming saying, those numbers are horrible. Yeah, they're not great. You're right, actually. These numbers are not that good. They are the right order of magnitude, though, times 10 to the 11th. I'm going to call that a win, but we're not all the way done yet. If I were to take a look at all these values, I could find the average, the percent error, but since the accepted value is 1.76 times 10 to the 11th, and we're looking at probably around 2.6, I'm guessing, times 10 to the 11th. There is significant error. However, we are on the right order of magnitude. So that's good. Now, is there a way we can take this data and get closer to our accepted value? The answer is yes. But I'm going to take a break for a bit and come back and show you how we can graph our data to eliminate any systematic errors that are skewing our results. Stay tuned or wake up, whichever one's appropriate.